Hey, what's going on? So I just want to come on here and give you a reminder and a message to remember to trust yourself first. And this is a message that I believe <clears throat> for me has really been important recently, especially this past year, and then also just in general in life. And this has come up a lot uh, with people I've been speaking with because I think this is more and more becoming become an issue uh, in general because I think what tends to happen especially when we get into personal development is we start to listen to other people which can be a good thing right if you're getting feedback from other people you're getting coaching or investing in yourself investing in programs reading books you know watching content all this stuff it can be a good thing but in moderation because I've been on the other side of things where I've gone extreme with it and I just suddenly find myself, my entire life is just consuming content or going through courses or going to events or, you know, conferences or going to, uh, or being part of masterminds and always hopping on these, these calls where you're learning something new. And so learning something new can feel really good, but it can also give you a sense, false sense of progress as well. So that's something to be careful of, right? Taken to an extreme, it can actually be uh, give you a false sense of progress. What I mean by that is it can make you feel like you're making progress, but in actuality, you're avoiding doing the the needle moving activities, the critical activities that are actually going to yield results. So usually these these needle moving activities, so to speak, are actually not as complex as you think they are. They tend to be a lot simpler and that's why they're overlooked. So what do I mean by that? So when it comes to, for example, with sales, Right, when I was doing sales and just in general, when it comes to sales, really there's, there's one main thing that matters and it's having enough opportunity, getting enough people to talk to, right? Reaching out to more people because the more people you reach out to, the more opportunities you have and eventually you're gonna get more clients that way. Or with marketing, with my particular position, it's about writing more ads and launching more ads, getting more ads tested, that's it. That's all that matters. If you test a thousand ads in a month, probably you're gonna find a winner, right? So if you focus on that one thing, then it's just a matter of time before you're gonna break through. Same thing with pickup. When I was going through that process of pickup, it's all about just volume, talking to more girls, right? You're gonna eventually figure it out. Um, as long as you're getting feedback, as long as you're tweaking and iterating. But eventually, you know, if you have a foundation of experience, it's a lot faster, it's a lot easier to transition into results. That's the issue is that a lot of people, they don't grow the roots deep down. What they do is instead they try to get the hacks. They try to get the shortcuts of the strategies or they, they use sometimes the, the false sense of progress from consuming content or going through courses or going to conferences. Actually, my, one of my mentors, Eli said this, where he said that he would see some, sometimes, because Eli used to work for Tony Robbins. He was, Eli was the top salesperson for Tony Robbins of all time and worked for Tony for over a decade, did over a hundred million dollars in sales for Tony. And uh, he said that sometimes he would see the same people at the, sa at the same conferences over and over and over and nothing would progress. And he said that sometimes they would get stuck in this loop of feeling good. And then what happens after is, is they go back to their regular lives, then they feel good some more, go back to their regular lives. Now, I think that you know you can still be making progress and maybe it's better than the alternative, which is just doing nothing, right? And just kind of um, hanging out and... All right, so I apologize, I had to just... Uh take care of something in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> I had no way of pausing this video, so I apologize if there was like a, a 10 second, 20 second delay there. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, Eli was basically saying that, you know, he would see the same people over and over at the same conferences and they'd just go back to their regular lives, come back, and it, nothing would really change, right? It was just the same thing over and over. I've seen this pattern myself in my own life where there was a phase where I was investing in so many programs, so many masterminds, all these different things, and not much progress was being made. Um, and even recently, I had this realization for myself where I was, you know, I, I do, I still invest in a lot of coaching. Uh, I like to get feedback from other people. Now, 
coming back to the to the main point, I trust myself the most, right? I trust myself the no, most, basically meaning that um, I look at, you know, I, I consider people's feedback, but I also have to understand that oftentimes the people that are giving you feedback don't always have the full context of your situation. They might be well-meaning, they might be very experienced, very, very intelligent, they might have a lot of experience in the field, but they only get, you know, it depends on the situation because sometimes I'm part of these like masterminds and group coaching programs as well, and I'll get maybe like five to 10 minutes with whoever that head person is, right? Um, the coach or the, I guess you could call it a guru or whatnot, but usually they're not gurus. It's more like they're, you know, they're experts, right? You get maybe five to 10, uh, 10 minutes with the expert and um, I'm talking with them. And you're basically, you have to give them your life story or not just your life story, but you know, the situation or the problem or question within about a one minute time span, right? Because you don't want to take up too much time. You got to be able to be quick and to the point and also try to give enough context so they can answer the question sufficiently, but it's very difficult to do, right? So, um, so what ends up happening usually is they give an answer based on this story that you give them, but it's not the full story. Um, but you, what I've come to realize is I can take bits and pieces of what they said, the things that are relevant and apply it and see what happens and observe based on you know what the result is of me putting it out there and and applying their feedback then i can iterate from there right that's usually where my progress has been is just taking the one to three things that really have stood out and i just lock in on that i apply it i see what happens and i iterate and i iterate and get more feedback and then i apply it and i iterate i just keep stacking on top of each other until you develop your own personal philosophy this is what I did in you know, my dating and social life. This is what I did in my health. Uh, I tried different diets. I tried different workouts um, until I found what works for me. And now I have a good sense of, of what I enjoy and uh, what is also healthy for me, right? So I can have a good balanced diet, uh, but I also have a lot of exercise in my life because I found, I found forms of exercise I really enjoy that energize me. And it just helps with my, not just my physical health, but my emotional health as well. Uh, it makes me feel really good in general. And oftentimes exercise can stabilize your hormones and things like that, right? Um, anyway, so my point is it's a matter of uh, getting the feedback, applying it, applying what resonates with you and really going for it and, and then seeing what the results are and then iterating from there. That's my point, right? So I think at the end of the day, when we really break it down and think about it, it's, that's why I say trusting yourself, right? It's, um, it reminds me of the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. He talks about in the first part of the book, he gives a story about how there's this statue, right? And there's this art expert, this, this expert in sculptures and, um, and a lot of people, you know, they were wondering about the statue, but this was one day, this expert, he looks at the statue and he says, because it's in a museum, right? He looks at the statue and says, that's fake. He says, that's fake. But he didn't actually know how to explain why it's fake. He just knew that it was fake. His gut told him it was fake. And so they started exploring it. They started looking into it because no one could actually tell that it was fake. But you know, this, this, art expert because he had seen thousands, I don't know how many, it was probably thousands of sculptures in his life. Um, he just knew by his gut instinct, his gut feeling told him it was fake. And so they looked at it, they looked at it, they looked at it. And after a ton of research, they discovered that it actually was fake, but no one could actually tell except this, this expert who came across it. He had a gut intuitive feeling about it just because he had been exposed to so much you know, so many sculptures and art in his life. So just imagine that in your own life, right? We've had this accumulation, this bank of, of experiences that we've had. And so if we allow our gut to take over a little bit or allow our gut to have a bit more control, because here's the thing is that oftentimes we really rely heavily on our rational mind to control everything oftentimes, especially in Western society. This is just the society we were raised in because of humanism, of the Renaissance, 
because that's when there was a shift away from deities, right? Uh, away from religion and towards humanism. But what that did is it actually sort of went extremely humanistic, right? So it drove a lot of technological t change and there was a lot of benefits that came out of that. But at the same time, some of that soul, I feel like, was taken away, right? Because it became more about what can we achieve as, as people, right? As human beings, because we're essentially, it, it sort of, it, I want to say it's, um, it changed the focus. It sort of discredited the existence of a higher consciousness or an, an external power. And so I, I think that's why it's, those sorts of ideas are very highly stigmatized in Western society. These ideas around higher consciousness and the universe and, and religion and all these things tend to be more stigmatized nowadays because I believe that was sourced from the Renaissance, from humanism, and there's that shift away from religion. And so, you know, it drove a lot of technological change, but now it's overbalanced in the opposite direction where we're highly rational, where we think that we're responsible for everything. But I believe it's a balance. I think that there's a bit of both. Obviously, I'm very, by nature, analytical and rational and, and things like that. I think a lot by nature, but I had to learn how to engage the other side of myself, the subconscious side of myself, the emotional side, the spiritual side, because what I realized is it's literally leaving that part of myself untapped when I'm, I'm basically leaving that on the table. And I think that's, that's what tends to happen is, especially a lot of guys that I've seen in this space, um, they tend to rely heavily, heavily on their rationality, right? It's all about being rational. It's all about logic. It's all about, it's, you know, they, they discredit their gut feelings. They discredit their intuition. But I think it's, it can be a powerful tool if you really know and, you know, you have a lot of self-awareness around what that actually is because it gives you that extra layer of depth, right? So, you know, I give this analogy before, but it's kind of like a man riding an elephant. The man is like your conscious mind. The elephant is like your subconscious, right? Your subconscious is a little bit more wild, but it's a lot more powerful as well. That man could be very, very rational, but that elephant at the end of the day is very, very powerful if we know how to, to harness it, how to, how to direct it. So, so that's my point is how can we really engage the different parts of ourselves? And if we learn how to engage our intuition, we can learn how to trust ourselves. Because when we, when we really engage our intuition, when we start to trust our gut more and more, that's engaging that side of ourselves, that subconscious side that oftentimes we leave on the table, right? We don't, we don't really give it credit. And, um, and once again, you know, here's another analogy. It's kind of like when you're working out, the, the common uh, muscle group that a lot of guys want to work out is their biceps because that's, that's what's showy. But, um, but oftentimes, if we're able to work out our back and our, our triceps, right? A lot of guys work out their chest and their, their biceps, but if we do the entire body, we can include all the muscle groups and they support one another and we could just be stronger holistically instead of just working out the parts like certain parts of our, our muscle groups. And so that's why I think it's, for me anyway, I've seen the benefit of being able to cultivate both the conscious mind and the subconscious mind because I can balance things out and I can harness the power of both and I can direct both, right? Um, so as I've progressed through life, I've found that to be really helpful for me. So I just want to share this with you. Just a reminder, trust your gut. Trust yourself the most, right? You might, especially in these days, there's so much content out there. We're constantly consuming YouTube. We're constantly consuming books. We're constantly consuming Netflix and all these other things. All these outside influences get into our brains. But remember, trust yourself. And uh, I'm tempted to just give one more, okay, let me just give one more example because before I end this, I know I've been going for a little bit, but uh, this just came to my mind as well. I might have already told this story, but just good reminder. Um, you know, my, my friend and I, w when we were doing sales together, um, I remember there's one time where, you know, a lot of times these sales guys, they have rules set in place. You, know, you should be doing this, especially when you're doing enterprise level sales 
where you're trying to get through gatekeepers and you have to speak with you know the chief marketing officer get in touch with all these different people right there's this hierarchy and a lot of people say oh yeah you should do it this way you should send an email you should reach out on linkedin you should do this we were doing all that and you know it works to a certain extent but sometimes there's this one time i had a gut feeling and i was like you know what i'm just gonna pick up the phone and call this person and uh, it was a cmo um, of a pretty big company, an enterprise skill company, very, very large company. Uh, they were doing a lot in revenue. And so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to pick up the phone and dial <laughs> and see what happens. And I get to the gatekeeper or, you know, the secretary. And, and uh, I was asking, you know, if there's someone there who is responsible for, for lead buying at your company or wh whatever the question was. And she was like, yeah, it's this person. And then she's like, do you want me to direct you? And I was like, yeah, go ahead and direct me. And so she transferred me over to his number and it went to voicemail. And a lot of times they'll tell you, don't leave a message, right? Don't leave a message. But for some reason I felt inclined. I was, I just had this feeling, maybe I should just leave a message. And so I just left a message for him and he ended up calling back the next day. And we ended up getting on the phone, uh, the guy I was working with and also this, this potential client we got on the phone together and he ended up wanting, wanting, uh, we ended, up, we ended up closing the deal and he ended up becoming one of our clients, like a really good client. And um, that was all just from that gut intuition. There's been times in my life where it's happened with, with dating as well. It's like, oh, I have this gut feeling that I should go talk to this girl. Um, and so I, I go over and do it. And then next thing you know, it's, it's working out really well. It's about trusting that gut sometimes, right? Or if you can just be fully aligned with it and just go with it and make that a habit make that a habit to trust your intuition. Just trust yourself the most. That's what I really want to emphasize today. Um, but that's it for now. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.